First of our top story, the UK Chancellor Jeremy Hunt is set to unveil the spring budget, or as many are calling it, the cost of living budget. While the UK Treasury says it will extend the energy price guarantee, which means a cap of £2,500 is extended for another three months. Hunt will deliver his tax and spending plan to the UK Parliament as thousands of health workers, teachers, civil servants and London's tube railway workers are staging their latest day of strikes over pay and conditions. Well, according to reports, Hunt is considering to expand free childcare to under two-year-olds in England. Currently, the three and four-year-olds get at least 15 hours of free childcare per week. Another topic in focus is the corporation tax. The tax is paid by the UK firms and foreign firms with offices in the UK and it alters according to the percentage of profits they make. Currently, the rate is 19%, which is expected to rise to 25% in April. The plan was announced by the then Chancellor Rishi Sunak in 2021, and experts do predict that Hunt will follow the same path with this one. However, some Tory backbenchers are opposing the rise, and they fear this will stop investment in the UK. Analysts also predict proposals to encourage people of Britain aged over 50 to rejoin the jobs market will be involved. Well, since the former UK Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng unveiled the so-called mini-budget, many things have changed across the UK. The plan will be under a heavy watch after the last budget. Well, it pours the UK into a, a market turmoil. Well, for more on this, Alex Isat is joining us from London to give us more details on what to expect from the budget today. Alex, good to see you. How could we forget that last budget, the Liz Truss Kwasi Kwarteng one? I think all eyes today, of course, on Jeremy Hunt, but a bit calmer the atmosphere, I would say. What do you think the public are expecting from him? Yeah, absolutely right there. A lot, a lot has changed since that mini budget has come out, and not least the Prime Minister itself. But Jeremy Hunt had stepped in originally to try and fix some of those issues that had come when the market fluctuated back uh, in 2022. And now we're expecting to hear a lot about the, the energy uh, costs, and they're going to be stuck at the same price until at least June or July. And of course, as you mentioned there, with childcare as well. Now, the UK is always a bit wary when it comes to any kind of budget. They see both ends of the spectrum, those on benefits and those pensions also getting a lot of uh, tax let off and getting more money. But the middle earners, they're the ones that keep, they feel, keep getting battered by all of this new budget and again we haven't seen that much difference although there is going to be a freeze on the fuel duty it was expected to go up by 12p but now it won't there is already a rise on alcohol so another 12p on top of that and those are the little things that people really want to you know actually have that luxury and enjoy going forward so it's all about the cost of living and trying to get bills down and it's great that the energy uh, will be capped now until june or july but the benefits of that won't be there they were put in place it's the last mini budget and uh, when we were expecting to be able to get the benefits from that energy cost but that isn't likely to be on the table so even though it's great news that we're still going to see this cap of 2500 per household all those benefits are slightly starting to go away so generally the the uk is just expecting to see again that the bankers and those in private sectors are going to get a bit of a, a positive boost from this but they aren't expecting it themselves OK, and as you say, that cap, when you factor in inflation, isn't as generous as sometimes it seems on paper. We know, Alex, there's a huge gap in the employment market at the moment. And Jeremy Hunt is desperate to get people back in since COVID. We've got people who maybe didn't go back into work after certain illnesses, some people not going back because of childcare, as you've said. How is he going to get people back into work? How is this going to be implemented, do you think? Well, it's a really interesting point when he keeps pushing that there's going to be this extra three hours of childcare up to 30 hours if you've got a child that's a one or two years old. But how exactly is that going to work? There are a lot more questions than are going to be answered just by pushing out there that this childcare will be an extra benefit to get parents back into work. One of the major questions is how much the government is actually going to be paying providers. Now, every provider asks for a different type of fee. So will it be an outright fee to all the providers? 
providers? Is there enough providers out there for childcare to ensure that it is a, is covering all of this extra free hours? You know, those are the questions that really need to be answered. And, and then we go to the other end with trying to get over 50s back into work. Those people have worked very hard. And even though COVID might have given them the opportunity to stop working and sit back a little bit and maybe spend some of that money that they had accumulated over the many years, that there has been a lot of push to try and get those 50s back into the workforce. And from what I understand, especially when it comes to the, the top pension cap, meaning you can earn more money and therefore your pension will get bigger, that is pretty much focused on those that are in the NHS, uh, doctors, specialists and bankers as well to keep them going for longer because there is a real crisis in the NHS. Of course, also we're seeing this huge crisis on the streets with strikes continuously happening. Today, there's huge strikes. London Underground is one of them. Teachers as well. And that looks like it's going to continue. So one thing that people will be asking for as well is the government going to try and put something in place to give more money to those in the public sector, um, to, to give teachers more money, to give those in the NHS chess money because you know, that is the, the bulk of people who are working now not about people who aren't working and coming back in it's about those that want to work and they just want better pay and better working conditions so I think there's a lot that needs to be worked on before we can just outright say that it's going to be a, a positive or, or negative uh, for the future but a, a lot of workers aren't likely to come back if they're actually at the age of 50 plus and they've enjoyed that time off in the past few years there's got to be a lot to make them come back yeah, quite right. And you mentioned those strikes, of course, taking place this week here in England and Wales as well. We had the nurses, we've got the teachers today, we've got train strikes later on in the week. So all eyes on Jeremy Hump, as you quite rightly say, lots of questions still. Alex Izad, our chief correspondent here in London. Thank you.